I've brought your book with you today. I um, have indeed. In the Time Traveller's Time Traveller's Guide to Medieval England. Um, now I understand you kind of take a different approach to most people when you're looking at the past. Did you want to elaborate on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, it strikes me as being a real disappointment that we always look at the past in a, a strict academic educational way. Surely if we have questions and curiosities about the past, about our own ancestors, we ought to ask other questions, questions that academics sometimes can't answer. If you turn the whole idea of talking about the past around to uh, a question of visiting a strange country, you can ask all sorts of questions which are all geared around our own curiosity. And we can ask questions which drive at the, the, the really fundamental thing about history itself, which is our relationship with our ancestors, how humanity has changed over time. And that's what this book is all about. I mean, I was looking, I was, um, looking at some of the questions. I mean, some of them were a bit humorous as well. What would you use for toilet paper, for example? I think that must be a lot more oh, engaging, I mean, getting people more involved. Humorous? Well, come on. I, I defy you to go to any country and not consider this problem. I can't say I've thought of it as such, but I suppose if I were to go to the 14th century, <laughs> um, I mean, as well, um, you've done a lot of books on people, and mm -hmm. this is something a bit different. What, would you, what, what kind of thing do you prefer? Do you prefer books on the people, or do you prefer... Well, all history is about people. I mean, history is about people itself. If, it's a, if we do the history of a desert island that nobody's ever lived on, that's, yeah. that's the realms of geology or, or, or some other subject. History is about people, whether you're focusing on the individual or whether you're talking about society in general. I mean, I've been thinking about some of the themes in this book practically all my life, since I was about 10. So it is a lifelong uh, interest. But some of the characters I've written about, especially the first one, uh, who happens also to have the name Mortimer, though he's no connection of mine. I did notice that, and I did yeah. wonder. Yeah, no, no, no connection of mine. But I mean, yeah, he he killed the king, and uh, or supposedly killed the king, and uh, uh, and uh, went off with uh, the queen. So you know, he's had an attraction as well. I mean, it's a, a Freudian double of which I've always been pretty impressed with, which I've always really, always been pretty impressed by. So. so you like to kind of embrace all aspects of history, isn't it? Yes, you? individuals and, and the whole society. Nick. You kind of mentioned, you know, history has been something you've always been interested in. Is that, would you say that's a fair thing to say? I mean, you always oh, knew it yeah, was yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the one thing that's always stood by me and I've seemed to, seemed to have some insight into ever since I was very, very young. Uh, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Uh, it could be because I grew up in a house which was full of antiques and therefore always knew that such and such a chair was belonged to my great-great-grandfather or such such sofa was died on by my great-great-great-grandmother um, or it could be the name Mortimer so because I've always had a, a, an alternative view of the past because we sympathize with the baddies because they've been called Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you're not a baddie. Well, <laughs> not for me to say is it?